All right, we're doing a little cleanup here today. Tools everywhere. So I got it looking a little better. So uh, I got to get the floor swept, pick up some parts for the Nova here. Going to try to get that sanded today and uh, taped up. Some progress on that at least. And I uh, got a little uh, little job to do. A little uh, beetle convertible. And uh, these people stopped by the other day. They were having a running issue. Car running really bad, left her stranded. And uh, I can't believe somebody taped off that molding or they painted it and the door handles. These Volkswagen door handles come out with two screws. I don't know why in the world you'd paint around one. But uh, we're not fixing that. We're gonna be fixing the hood. Uh, that's what's damaged, broke down on her and uh, some tow truck damage here. Uh, tow truck guy just got a job and uh, yeah, five kids right before Christmas. Can you give me a deal? And so I told her I'd fix it pretty cheap. We're going to uh, knock it out for next to nothing. We need to pull the handle. It looks like it took the hit right on the handle. And uh, most of the damage is right here. Uh, got some indirect damage here and here. Where it got pushed in, it bowed it up on the brace under here. Oh. So you can see where the brace made contact with the outer skin and uh, that's what gave us that kink. So we have to uh, do some paint work in here also. We'll get that uh, pulled out, pull that handle back off of there and the latch. And then we'll probably just pull the hood off this car rather than take the whole car in there and be responsible for the convertible top and you know the rest of the car, you know, we take the hood off, throw the cover over it and uh, come back to the car when we need to put the hood on. Uh, <clears throat> I also have some running issues. This is a new motor. Uh, hang on a minute here, two-handed deck lift. <clears throat> Again, they painted the rubber on this. One screw to remove that. <clears throat> I don't get that. <clears throat> At least they didn't. Oh, no seal channel. We've seen that before, huh? So that just floats there. Maybe a little glue will hold that down. But uh, this has got to be one of the worst Volkswagen motors that I've ever had the pleasure of working on. I tried to straighten this out uh, Saturday, made a few adjustments, and it seemed to be running better. But it looks like there's water that's water in the fuel big time it's full of water in the gas tank so i'm gonna have to drain the tank on this one we're gonna take the top of the carburetor off and clean it out because i'm sure it's full of water i can see the rust right there you can see the water floating in the uh, filter element uh, this this uh, fuel is very hard on these uh brazilian and uh, china parts uh, the rubber they use over there is not uh not good for the alcohol so we might have a pump issue with fuel fuel delivery uh, or it could just be the water but uh, i tried to move this car and it barely moves and uh, i feel bad i tuned it in the driveway you know i just adjusted the carburetor and set the time in and it seemed like it was running fairly decent and he left and it was running good but it's it's running really bad and uh, we have to straighten that out also so right now we're going to concentrate on the uh the paint work you know because that's the uh, time consuming stuff and uh We'll get back to this. It's got one of these, uh, I hate these distributors. I hate to say it, you know, Vacuum Advance 09. It's a new uh, craze, I guess. And uh, Greg Porter sent one for his motor and uh, it wouldn't even start. And uh, th this is this kind of stuff I don't understand, guys. You know, this is a brand new motor these people just paid for. And uh, look at the condition of the inside of that distributor you know they never checked the points lubricated the uh shaft there or anything it's just uh thrown together you know and uh this is the kind of stuff that makes volkswagen people not want to be volkswagen people uh you know when you can't have dependability it's just no good you, you don't want to get in the car and drive somewhere and break down halfway there and uh when you sell somebody a motor you should really take the time to check the the basic tune-up parts, you know, that make a motor run. Uh, I don't get it, but 
I don't know. I'm not the one building all these motors and tuning them up either. You know, I don't have that ability to con the people out of their money. Uh, they just seem to come here after it doesn't work out. So I don't know. Uh, we'll start from square one. Uh, apparently, this is the second motor. It's a Fomoco. First motor blew up shortly after they put it in the car. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say anything because, you know, it's just like the tranny I built. A lot of it's insulation. You know, you look around at this and there's no uh, plugs in the fan housing. So all our coolant, that would be like leaving your radiator hose disconnected. You know, all that uh, air that's supposed to be blowing over the cylinder heads is coming out of the fan housing uh, and not being directed over the cylinder head. We have our sheet metal all opened up here, uh, exposed to the hot header heat that's... Uh, making the heat come from the header into the engine compartment and getting sucked into the cooler fan and it's blowing all that hot exhaust air over our oil cooler heating the motor up so uh, it looks like it is a new case there's no serial number on there uh, I don't know the motor sounds fairly tight the assembly itself uh, so and I can't tell what kind of power it has because it wouldn't even uh, you can't even let the clutch out without it stalling so uh, I guess you know a few things we're going to start with would be this coil up here, a suspect, it's not a Bosch. And uh, if you're a Volkswagen owner, you want to really stick to a blue coil, they're internally, uh, the voltage is internally regulated for uh, the Volkswagen point setup. And sometimes when you buy an aftermarket coil, it's too much voltage to the uh, points unless you run a ballast resistor. And then the ballast resistor is not enough voltage, it's somewhere in between. 12 and 6 volts is what makes these happy so that's an issue uh, this carburetor is a 34 pick imitation carb it's a aftermarket Chinese carb seems to be missing a nut so we only got one nut holding the carburetor on so we got our work cut out with this one uh, trying to make it run right and uh, yeah so a lady likes to drive it on the interstate and uh, right now that's just not possible so these convertibles even uh, tend to run hotter. They don't have the vents on the top. You know, they just have the ones in the deck lid. And uh, I always tell my customers, if you want these things to run cool, you know, get you a tennis ball, cut the tennis ball and hook it onto your latch and uh, make a stop where the deck lid is propped open a little bit when you're driving it down the interstate. And that'll let all that hot air out of the engine compartment and it'll let it draw cool air into the fan. Uh, Old Speed is a company that makes like shifters and different gadgets for Volkswagens and they actually make a, a, a deck lid standoff that attaches down there on your lock where you can still lock the deck lid and uh, it just spaces the deck lid off the apron a little bit. In the old days we used to stand them off this way you know and then use a scoop but you know as it rains it fills the motor with uh, water and stuff and that's no good. And this one has that same exact problem, you know, if it rains on this car, it's missing the, uh, there's actually a, a drain that bolts here that's gone off the deck lid. So every time it rains, this motor gets soaked with water, uh, coil, all the ignition parts, and the carburetor. So that's something else we'll have to address, you know, either uh, get a cover for the motor or find that piece for. So, all right, guys, let me uh, get a 13 millimeter and uh hammer and we'll start uh working this hood out so i'm already up to uh eight minutes so i don't want to make this too long i'm getting the new internet today so my uh should be able to put more videos up faster uh we got pretty fast internet now but uh apparently there's new uh some super fast stuff available and uh, you'd be able to game and download and upload and all kinds of stuff with it and uh, it's not much more so we're gonna go with that it's uh, one step down from fiber optics so so that's where we're at we finished cleaning up the shop and uh, get some stuff moved around we'll get to get some uh, primer on this fender today and I figured I'll just wait and uh, prime that hood and this fender at the same time so uh, Maybe throw some uh, primer on that uh, Nova fender back there too that's ready to go. And uh, yeah, so I had somebody offer me some Nova bushings. Uh, Jerry Cheater Forder offered me some uh, shackle bushings for the rear of the car, but he thinks they might not be right, but I think he sent them anyway. And uh, another one of Chris, Chris's buddies, uh, 
offered some subframe bushings and uh, I've got the aluminum bushings in the subframes but uh, I could definitely use some uh, you know the bushings for the core support and it looked like you had some of those so you know if you're not using them uh, I'd gladly play, pay the shipping or you know uh, what a trade it out in materials whatever you want to do you know uh, so I hate for you guys to give me something you know but uh, if you got it laying around and you want to sell it cheaper if you want to you know I don't know whatever you want to work something out with some paint or something we can do that but uh, any helps appreciated you know I don't want to sound unappreciated but uh, you guys know it's hard to put these cars together you know and I'm, I'm definitely doing it on no budget so uh, you know I don't really get a paycheck any little jobs I do around here I just give the money to Andrea so that's where I'm at now living off of uh, retirement money so which is almost gone so that's how that goes you know I think it's gonna last forever but when you don't have a job and uh, you just live off your bank you know it uh it depreciates quickly so and you know i think everybody finds himself in the situation where we're just in a uh, spending and not saving mode and uh not all of us can be like tommy shoe and save money it's hard so especially when you got kids kids are expensive and uh it's always something you know it's always something christmas toys birthdays thanksgiving you know this kid needs a car, that kid needs shoes. You guys know how it is. So, uh, yep, that's why the garage guys are get along so good. We got so much in common. A lot of us are uh, old guys trying to get cars done that we've had sitting around for a long time, you know, because of the uh, kitties. So I was lucky enough to get this Volkswagen running again. And it was, uh, you know, it was from... Uh, you know, I've said it before, but Pete, Southwest Rod and Customs, I watched some of his videos, and uh, when I was really down and out, this car was uh, in pieces, primer. Primer, no paint, no motor, no tranny, no nothing. It was a uh, shell. So it was this blue car, and so it was the uh, 56 Beetle that I sold. And uh, I used to watch his videos uh, laying in bed, and uh, made me get out of bed get down in the garage and i built these three cars watching his videos before i even became uh subscribed or a member of youtube i wasn't uh, signed in so i couldn't comment couldn't put thumbs up couldn't do anything i just watched the videos and it was back in the early days i guess when he had the two guys working for him and they were doing the original carmen Ghia and the mustang that they showed not too long ago but uh and the first video i saw was when he uh finished his beetle and i uh, went for his ride with bruno and uh that motivated me to get out of bed start making videos and start building these cars again but uh stuff set in the garage for years you know i didn't touch this car for eight years and i haven't touched the nova for for 15 16 years so uh 16 years the nova's been waiting i did put quarter panels on it and outer wheel houses and stuff like that at the other house and uh that was definitely from watching uh you guys on youtube and wanting to uh you know start getting the projects moved and stuff and getting stuff started again so and i am guilty of buying projects along the way this bus is one of them you know i should have never bought this i bought that and uh you know when all this stuff was apart it's just what I needed was another project, but sometimes you just can't pass them up. You know, they just call out to you. And, uh, you know, when the plants line up and the circumstances are right, we all uh, seem to pull the trigger if it's something that we think we might be able to uh, redo and bring back some old memories, because that's what this is all about, I guess. You know, it's about uh, trying to hold on to that, you know, something that you had in the past thing you know or wasn't able to have in the past and you can afford it now so some of us can afford it some of us do it just because we love it so all right guys let me shut this off i'm babbling i'll go ahead and uh pull this hood off there's the brown dog she's hanging out today outside got the beagle inside cause she can't leave my cats alone but brown dog really doesn't care about the cats you know she just wants to hang you know Anybody needs kitten? We got black cats. You know, Halloween's just right around the corner. So uh, there you go. Four little uh, kittens ready to go. Healthy, eating, 
and uh, they're a little skittish these guys they're not uh, friendly like the last batch but uh, they're all friendly when it comes to food time so you know I'm sure with enough uh, time and you know love they would uh, come around but uh, I've been trying not to get attached to them because I don't need any more animals I got too many uh, too many farm animals here so alright guys you gotta make a bracket for that I think I showed you that I don't know if I did or not I went to put those on and there's no bracket for the front end there so uh, yeah I gotta get the bracket or make one I guess it mounts off the front differential and uh, these shocks attached to it I've got this the mounting brackets on the tie rod there but when I swapped the front end out and sold it I must have left the brackets for the front shocks and the steering dampener on the front end it's a real smooth move there but uh so yeah that's where we at where where we're at I have to put some wrap up bars on this we'll be putting those on I got a set uh they were mounted on the corporate rear end so we got to make some brackets on the nine inch and basically it's just a bar that goes from this uh, front front mount there on the frame rail and uh, goes back to the rear end it keeps the rear end from wrapping up you know like a traction bar or a south side bar on a drag car so all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off it's uh, 16 minutes now way too long and uh, we'll talk to you guys later you guys have a great day make some videos push the record button you know how to do it